What makes a good PC port? Well, to answer that question, you first need to understand what a PC port is. Way back in the late 90s when games like Half-Life and Quake 3 Arena were being released, PC was a platform that was thriving. Even with the PlayStation console around and the looming release of the PlayStation 2, developers were still making games specifically for PC, something which just isn't as common anymore. Nowadays, consoles are a household item. PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones are available for only around £250, meaning that they're more affordable than ever, and it shows with the amount of homes owning at least one of them. What this means is that when companies make a game, they've got to ensure that they're making a game that works on the systems that they're going to primarily sell the most copies on, and the reality is that the Xbox One and the PS4 are those two main consoles. That's not to say that millions of players aren't playing PC games every day, because they are, but the majority of the player base of a lot of new AAA games is now only on console. As such, the developers make their games for the consoles and then they port the game across to PC, meaning that they take their game and make a version of it that works on PC. Sometimes developers do it well and add in specific features that PC games require, and then sometimes they don't and the game has no PC specific features and runs badly because it was designed for a console. Let's take Watch Dogs 2 as an example. I think a lot of people didn't get very hyped for Watch Dogs 2 because they felt a little let down with the first game. It was a bit disappointing with its graphical downgrade and overall the single player lacked variety. Watch Dogs 2 however is a very good game. Its story is much better than the first game, and the main thing is that it doesn't take itself too seriously, and as a result the missions are a lot more varied and fun. Just be wary of the hipsters, they are everywhere. One thing the game did really really well though was the PC port. It actually didn't release at the same time as the console version, which was sad, but it launched two weeks later. At least when it did, it had features that PC players would expect and want. Watch Dogs 2 is an excellent example of a PC port done well. So what did it have that PC players have come to expect and need from a good PC port? Well some things are just expected as standard I think, full screen mode. Sounds basic and simple, and yet still some Windows Store games for a long time would only allow borderless windowed mode. Frames per second is of course another big issue, and more specifically is it being capped to how it was on the console. A lot of games release these days and they've had their game capped at 30 or 60 FPS, and that just isn't how it should be on PC, because people spend a lot of time and money on gaming PCs that will run games at the best possible performance, and then the game that they want to play is limited to 60 FPS, when their monitor's refresh rate is say 120, or even nowadays up to 240Hz. It just doesn't make much sense to cap a PC game at 30 or 60 frames per second. Of course the FPS limit is easier for a lot of developers because when they make a game for consoles they know they need a target of 30 or 60 FPS so often, even if the cap is removed on PC, the game still won't run that much better on PC because it hasn't been optimised for PC. And that brings me over to the next point, PC optimization. It's just not good enough to bring the game over onto PC, make sure it works and then ship it. The PC platform has way more power in both the CPU and GPU, and it can be made to not only make the game look better but also run much better by actually taking into account the extra power that some PCs can offer. This isn't always the case though, a good example of this would be Mafia 3. It runs well on console but on PC the performance was terrible, with really bad frames per second dips regularly even on top spec PCs. It's received a new patch since the game launched, but as ports go, that one was pretty bad. One thing that Mafia also did was to completely ignore certain high resolutions, specifically widescreen ones. Some of the overlays that pop up on screen such as blood and other things would actually be too small to fit on the screen and you could see their edges. The same with the HUD. That's because generally consoles don't need to worry about that and it's been an oversight on the PC development, something again that Watch Dogs did right. And then you have other things that are just a requirement, but sometimes you don't get them, being able to change your controls. It sounds simple again, but sometimes some controls are locked in, which isn't ideal. PC players just have different requirements. Everyone has a different way of doing things. Raw mouse input and mouse acceleration are also big things that need addressing and it's often been overlooked. The feel of your mouse when you're playing a PC game, especially an FPS game, is just so important and it requires the developer to work on the mouse movement specifically for PC and not just port across the console movement because it makes a huge difference. Thankfully Watch Dogs 2 does in fact have an acceleration setting and you can even set it to a specific amount if that's your thing. 
There are even a few extra details and smaller things packed in here that make a big difference. Hold or click to aim down the sight. So many games miss this. When you aim down the sight in a game, some players like to click the button once and others like to hold it, but often that decision is made for you with a console port, not with Watch Dogs 2. In fact, you can set if your walk, sprint and equipment buttons are hold or press. A lot of thought has actually gone into the specific PC settings here. Now all of these settings are fantastic, they really make what PC gaming is all about, customization. But the specific graphic settings are also a big thing too. PC gamers like to be able to change all of the graphical settings on their game to how they desire. Some things may be on ultra, some on low, or maybe they have their rig to run everything at top spec. That's the joy of PC gaming. Watch Dogs 2 does a good job here as well, no surprises there. You can change everything from the overall quality to the shadows, water, light shadows, reflections, depth of field, motion blur, bloom, ambient occlusion, AA, post-processing AA. You get the picture. The settings are very in-depth here, and that's exactly how it should be for every PC port of a game. Of course, changing your field of view is in there as well, along with pixel density, basically allowing you to upscale your game beyond your resolution if you've got a PC that can handle it. And this kind of customization and optimization is incredibly important because you have to remember that not everyone has a top spec PC, and those with older PCs may want to play the game at a decent frame rate, but they need the option to turn all the graphics down so they can do that. Overall, I have to say, as PC ports go, I'm very impressed with the Watch Dogs 2 PC version. I know a lot of people felt burnt with the first game and the PC version for this was delayed by two weeks compared to the console version but they've really put in the effort here with Watch Dogs 2 with all of these settings. From mouse acceleration to changing the entire HUD to how you want it and customising each and every graphical option. It's impressive and it's great to see that in this modern console driven gaming age there are still games like this that are properly catering to PC players and it's about time that other developers did the same. DICE for example have always done a good job of having solid solid PC settings and performance on their games on PC, but other developers lately have just outsourced their PC ports and it's not worked out great. It just causes customer dissatisfaction and bad press. Here's hoping for a change. So that's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Watch Dogs 2 PC port and really it sets an example for how every PC port should be. If you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up, if you didn't a thumbs down. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.